Hi, my name is Barry Crampton. Today I'm going to show you around our Volkswagen Touareg. Then I'll take you for a ride in it, but first I'll tell you a little bit more about it. It's a 3 litre TDI V6 Blue Motion Tech SE Titronic four wheel drive. 2014 on a 64 plate, has done 48,628 miles. Fuel economy, urban 33.6 miles per gallon, extra urban 43.5 miles per gallon, and combined is 39.2 miles per gallon. Has a 0 to 60 time of 7.8 seconds and a top speed of 135 miles per hour out of a six cylinder 242 brake horsepower 24 valve engine. Front fog lamps, we've got parking sensors in the grill there. Five twin spoke alloys, the wheel arch protector, half folding door mirrors, chrome window surrounds, the aluminium roof bars, the door protectors here, and the sill protectors, rear tailgate spoiler. Plenty of room in the back, rear seats fold independently of each other, rear roller blind, power socket in the back here. And we've also got a, underneath here, underneath all my stuff, a get your home space saver wheel, the chrome bumper protector, reversing sensors in the bumper and the twin exhaust tips there. Makes a pleasant change to be able to get into a car without banging your head on the, on the roof here. So... Uh, Plenty of room in the pack, plenty of headroom. Got this uh, rear centre armrest, two cup holders in the middle of it. Nice high seat back. Seats are like brand new in the back. It's got this lovely, well, I, <laughs> lovely old fashioned wood. <laughs> and seeing as I'm old fashioned, I like it. Um, and then the aluminium strips around it, the aluminium trim. Your climate controls in the back here too. There's a power socket underneath that flap um it's really nice rear child seat isofix anchor points in the back three inertia reel belts just nice little touches a, a fresh air vent in the uh, b pillar there and also a couple of coat hangers and uh, help you get in rear over mats it's uh it's it's a very very nice car the, the lovely outside very cold the only, the only problem is this place is about 25 miles from our garage. Um, and by the time I get here, the, the, the cars are getting pretty dirty now in, in, with all the spray on the road. And it, I can't really do the outside of it justice, although the driving and everything else and the, the surroundings make the cars look better. So you just have to take my word for it that it's a really nice clean car. I'll just take you for a ride in it. So there we go, there's a VW key. And it, it, there's no blade on it as such. The whole thing slots in the dash and then you turn it. So that's how you start it. Let's just turn the fan down. And we'll turn that down too, so the audio doesn't start. Um, so height and reach adjustable, multifunction steering wheel, service history. Seventeenth and nine, two thousand fifteen at seven thousand six hundred miles, Hadwin's VW Cumbria. Twenty third and nine, two thousand and sixteen at fifteen thousand nine hundred ninety six miles, Hadwin's VW Cumbria. 18 to the 6th, 2018, at 31,678 miles, Hadwin's VW Cumbria. 1st of the 8th, 2019, at 36,958 miles, Lound Road Garage Kendall. 4th of the 8th, 2020, at 42,114 miles, Lound Road Garage Kendall. 
5th of the 8th, 2021 at 46,998 miles, Lound Road, Garage Candle. It's done 48,628 miles now. So what, 1,700 miles since it was serviced. Um, this, this is kind of the same uh, shares the chassis, I think, with uh, the Audi Q7 and the, the Porsche Cayenne. Although I actually prefer the VW version. I uh, don't like the suspension so much on the Audis and the Porsche. Actually, let's just... Uh, there we go. So it's powerful in door mirrors. As I say, it's, it's got this lovely proper wood. Uh, it looks like polished walnut in the dash, the centre console and the door cards. And, uh, these are certainly the cars to be in in this sort of weather, even though it's nice. It's very comforting to be uh, a little bit further off the ro road, a little bit higher up. sun's ahead of us so probably shining into all the cameras making it difficult got seat height adjuster here I need to go down further if possible yeah there we go got bluetooth hands free sat nav bluetooth audio streaming climate control um, in the windscreen I can see filaments which suggests it's got a heated front windscreen although I couldn't the roads are very bad there it's been churned up um, I, I couldn't for the life of me tell which one was a heated rear screen and which was the front there's a, a button there that shows you kind of full power and that that normally I, I actually can't see it because my glasses are uh, kind of polarized so over in the corner there see that that brings up the the fan when you when you click maximum front screen it, it brings up the fan and over here on the right hand side that's your heated rear screen uh, whether it switches them both on at the same time I'm not sure I suppose I could do with Having a look in the handbook, it, uh, unless there's a switch somewhere else that I can't see. The car drives really well. Again, it's the the, the, the tyres that did not compromise the ride with two big alloy wheels, which do, granted, look better on the outside, but they, they drive awful. I'm just going to pull over here. And again, the uh, low-profile tyres, you, you feel every bump in the road. And to, to me, that's not what having a four-wheel drive really is all about. Hang on, there's a service schedule. Let's just see if it's stamped up. Yeah, so it looks like it's all stamped as well. So we've got a proper service book. Volkswagen. Here we go, heated. I mean, could they make that print any smaller? My eyes are pretty good, but that's just... Need a magnifying glass. Well, okay, so I'll forget that. So the answer to that is I don't know, and... Uh, There doesn't seem to be an entry on the heated rear screen, so we'll just worry about that later. It's got stupid stop start, and I don't know where the switch is to knock that off either. Oh, there it is. Right, we've knocked that off. We've achieved one switch find. So, nice clear dashboard, analogue instruments, 
coolant temperature left, far left that is. Then we've got rev counter, your information display in the center, which is kind of controlled from here. That's driver alert system. And we can just flick through them. Navigation, so that displays the navigation. At the moment it's showing a compass, which is as much use as a, an Astra on a motorbike. The audio, telephone, vehicle. Click on the vehicle, it's got range, 105 miles at the moment. Distance, we've done 29.3 miles from home this morning. That's your digital speedo, which I, I prefer. That's uh, no, no looking or no having to look, it's straight in front of you. No, you know, checking the instrument and then focusing on the the actual numerals they don't look as nice digital displays but uh, they, they certainly serve your purpose better certain death corner here no replies of course it could be a cyclist with a bell <laughs> that I can't hear like, the, like this morning honestly <laughs> Is it just me or do cyclists promote road rage? Do they do it on purpose? Because that's the only that's the only reason I can think that they, they ride like they do. Great engine. You know, low revs just pulling up the hill. No problem. It'd probably do the same with a big caravan on the back or a big trailer. We can knock that over there. Change up and down like so. Change down. Bring it back towards you. So back over there. And I think so we're in D4 at the moment. If I just knock that back, that changes it to the sport setting. I'm not going to drive fast today because... The, the roads are pretty treacherous. I'm sure there'll be lots of black ice up here. It is that it is cold. I'm saying it's five degrees now, but it was minus two before when I was when I was out there videoing, freezing to death. So let's see what else. What's that for? Glasses case probably. It's kind of lined with piley stuff um, on the dash here radio media phone climate so there's your climate does it show you the front screen there now let's have a look so I still don't know whether that's that's the front screen I don't know. I'm just going pack around a tight bend, so that that's the sort of stuff I, I don't want to be messing about with. You know, the, the, in cars there should be switches. If you have to take your eyes off the, if you can't like fumble about until you find the switch, then then it shouldn't be in a car. So here we go. So that's it. Is that right? That must that must be the heated front screen then. So it would appear there's no switch. That, that's that's crazy. There's no, would appear there's no switch to to knock it on. You have to go into climate and then click uh, click the switch on there. Extras, automatic air recirculation, automatic windscreen heating. Oh well, all right. <laughs> I, I take it back. So that's. Automatic windscreen heating switched on. Unless that was me switching it on there. But anyway, it's on for future owners. Heated front windscreen, best invention ever. Um, this this morning, I was sat in my Range Rover listening to an audio book and uh, 
<laughs> while my neighbours were, were scraping the, the windscreen. Well, there you go. Probably their vehicles do 60 miles to the gallon and mine only does 30 or something. I'm, uh, all, I, all I can tell you is about four wheel drive and yes it's another Mustang story <laughs> I've been using a Ford Mustang which I absolutely love I think it's beautiful to look at I've wanted one ever since I saw Bullet in probably 1968 I sneaked into the pictures to see it because I was too young and uh, we've got one in the garage I've wanted one for ages first sign of cold weather back in back in my Range Rover heated front screen heated steering wheel four-wheel drive up off the road you know we've had some we've had some shocking weather in Preston recently and uh, we, we're quite prone to floods and you know you, you see people struggling uh, and it's just really no effort in, in one of these and, and th this is this is a nice car it's lovely to drive as I say, I, I jump in some of these four-wheel drive things and, and they've just taken every last ounce of enjoyment out of them by making making the wheels too big and the suspension too hard. And like growling noise off the tyres and every little bump you feel. This, this is quite lovely. The seats are very comfortable as well and, and padded. It's a nice set out. And, it, and it's, it feels, again, you, you jump in some cars and you think, you know, this is going to be tatty after five years. It, it, the materials that it's made of inside, um, they, you know they're just not made for it. Um, and, I, and I think this, this will just go on forever. And it's, it's like... Um, <laughs> like my leather jacket story I've got a motorbike jacket it's not this one it's a it's a triumph motorbike jacket and I've had it for probably I, I, I bet I've had it for at least 15 years probably more I've been out in all sorts of weather when it's been lashing down I've messed about with cars in it I've got jackets that you know I've, I've ripped the flipping pockets off or the sleeve off when I've been getting out of a car normally it's this when you get out of a car when you're videoing it and you catch your, your sleeve on the corner of the door the next minute you've got a big tear my my triumph jacket is like brand new and, and it'll be like brand new when I'm dead it really will it is it's the leather's that thick and the only reason I've got this one apart from I've <laughs> when I saw when I saw the uh, Mustang film with Steve McQueen in he was in a Le Mans a film called Le Mans as well and he, he had a jacket which was kind of this design and I've always wanted one I know it's it's so sad I know but anyway and the only reason I'm not wearing my Triumph jacket in here is because it's got zips at the back when you're on your bike and you get too hot, you've got zips at the back that you can undo and it allows the air to zip down here and zip down here and it allows the air to flow through the jacket. But of course, zips and, and leather seats aren't conducive. Um, but the, the point is, this will be like my old leather jacket. It will just go on forever. It feels proper, feels well built. The materials, not, not fantastic, but they don't look cheap and they look hard wearing and uh, you know wood will still be in fashion when all this checker plate stuff and when all that's gone out of fashion again wood will always be in fashion just looks a bit slippy on this bend we've got yeah it is a bit slippy it's ice we've got water coming off the field going across the road and into the river there of course it's frozen as I say I don't think I'll be able to come up here much longer to video the cars without it being too treacherous it's not so bad with four-wheel drives but anything else 
just asking to go for a, a trip down the valley. Um, oh, cruise control over here. Cruise control, how do we work that? I think if you pull towards you, it's resume. Click the ending. That switched the cruise control on just when I don't want it on, as usual. But I'll just set it to 30. That's well, 20 actually. It's just set to 20. I can increase the speed by knocking it up, knock the lever down, that decreases it. Now will knock it away from you and that's off. Pull it back towards you and that's resume. So it's got all the stuff, all the stuff, big front central armrest, and that those kind of split in two. I don't know what the reason for that is. Uh, unless it's so the passenger can get something out of there while you're resting your arm on this side. Here's your selector and you've got, it's pretty simple there, I think it's got on road and off road just when we get round here I'm just waiting for this guy to go past oh that's very kind of him there we go we'll just wait for him to get past what have we got there we've got auto hole there as well so that's off road there's no centre setting there's no others on road and off road so this is showing off road it's telling me your steering angle so that's four degrees. Let me just see if it goes to minus. No, it doesn't. Right, okay. I was just wondering, really, what... Uh... what the reason would be. So naught's in the middle. I know, obviously, the... the you know the, the first thing they tell you when you go on a with a racing driver is don't take your hands off the steering wheel <laughs> your driving instructor tells you not to cross your hands on the steering wheel and uh, you're driving <laughs> you're up oh. all right so that's actually showing it, yeah it's picked up that we're going downhill the off-road and it's just this will just take me downhill without sliding, but it's meant for coming down hills like so. I'll put it back on uh, ordinary driving. I mean, this, <laughs> I can just imagine this when it's icy. <laughs> you, you know, you're down there. I've, uh, I've been up here plenty of times when there's been cars down the middle there. What seemed like a good idea, taking your car for a blast, ends up in uh, a trip into the ravine there. The bags of room, let's say, very, very comfortable. These are like armchairs, and it's uh, the leather feels like if it's real leather, you never know these days. Might be this vegan stuff, but um, the leather feels like a uh, you know, real good quality stuff, real thick stuff. really notice the difference when I come up here in uh, saloon cars and then you come up in a, a four-wheel drive that's a proper four-wheel drive and the only thing is they're going to pull out then and they can't see the other car coming yes yeah if it's a proper four-wheel drive
you know, the, the, the thing with a car like this is you can go anywhere in any, any weather. You can still enjoy having a nice day out. Don't have to be in a, a sports car. And you can come up to places like this. Park off road. I, I noticed where I was... Uh, where I was... Where I video the cars. It's obviously um, popular with courting couples up there. And... Uh, Well, it looked like it, it looked like somebody had got stuck. Let's let's just put it that way. Um, in the right right at the edge of it is is quite muddy. And uh, it, it it reminds me of, and, and I shouldn't be laughing. I I used to go out with a girl who lived out in the country. And um, on a country road, and I was dropping her off one night, and I, and I pulled up in my dad's Opal Record, which was rear wheel drive. And of course, there was no such thing as limited slip diffs in, in, in them kind of days, it fitted to them kind of cars. And I tried to set off after, you know, kind of waving goodbye, and I, I couldn't. And she couldn't drive, so she very kindly tried to push. And unfortunately, as you know, if it's not a limited slip day, it doesn't transfer all the power to the other to the wheel that's got traction. And it just spun. And when I looked in the mirror, she was absolutely covered in, in mud. Anyway, that relationship didn't last long either. There we go. Look at this. It, it, it's a lovely car. As I say, I'm, I'm just, it's just a shame that um, the cars get kind of covered in spray on the way up here. I really do need to find somewhere else where, uh, after having said this, this is just as the car came in. Lance hasn't cleaned this yet. So. Uh, you know, if you like it now, it's going to be even better when, when Lance gets to work on it. And also the burger van's there, so... Uh, I think I'll be treating myself this morning. So that's it, lovely car, very, very nice to drive. See you in the next video, thanks for watching.